What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodyV.com and in this video, we're going to build this simple image viewing app using the file chooser with Kivi and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to build this simple image viewing app using the file chooser with Kivi and Python. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, a few videos ago we looked at using images with Kivi, and we just sort of hard coded an image in, but what if you want to sort of look up different images, sort of navigate around, and, uh, and do other things? Uh, how do we do that? Well, Kivi comes with something called File Chooser, and uh, that's what we're going to look at in this video. So we're going to build this simple app, and it shouldn't take just a couple of minutes to do this. Pretty easy. All right, so I've got two files open, menu.py and menu.kv, and this is the same exact starter code that we always use, uh, the same stuff we've been using in all the videos for both of these. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. So before we get started, really quickly, let's just head over to the Kivi website, click on the documentation, and I'm just going to search for File chooser and there it is we can click on it and you can see there are two different options here we can have a list view of your file system or we can have this icon view and we'll look at both of these but you know you're going to use whichever one is best suited for your own project they're both very easy to use and basically the difference between using them is just changing the name when you call it there's no real other coding that you have to do to pick either one of these so it's really really easy so you can come through here and read all this if you're interested and see there's a bunch of stuff. We're just gonna kind of skip over all of this and just build this out ourselves. much, I think, simpler. But you can really dig into it if you wanna learn more about this stuff. So let's head over to our KV file, menu.kv, and we're, I'm just gonna use a box layout. We've been using this for a while here. I'll set the orientation to vertical, set our size to root width and root high so it expands to the whole thing. And we're gonna have two sort of panels here, a top and a bottom. The image will be on the top and the directory structure will be in the bottom. And I wanna give these a padding of 50 and spacing of 20. We've been doing this before in other videos, so nothing new here. So let's come up here to the top and let's give this an ID. And I'm just gonna call this my underscore widget. Really call this anything you want, but this is our widget layout. So I'm just gonna call it my widget. And uh, you'll see why we need this in a bit here. And so we could come down here and inside of our box layout, we can just start to use this. So to use the file chooser, we just call file chooser icon view. Now I'm saying icon view because, let me pull this back up, I want to start out using this icon view and it's file chooser icon view right there. If you want to use the regular list view, you would just call file chooser list view instead of icon view. And really that's the only difference. So we're going to start out with the icon view. Now we need to give this an ID. And I'm going to call this, I don't know, file chooser. Give it any ID that you want. really doesn't matter. Okay. So strictly speaking, if we just save this and run it. So let's go ahead and run this. And just right off the bat, we see we've got our directory structure, our icon view. And we can navigate around here. I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse. Or you can just sort of right click and drag, right? But I'm going to use the scroll thing here and, you know, just kind of look through here. Here's our Kivi new directory, click it once. Here's all of our files and uh, pretty cool. So this doesn't actually do anything at the moment, but it's just that easy to sort of start to use this thing. So, all right, now we wanna actually do something with this. So when we click on one of those directories or one of those files, we need to sort of grab that and do something with it. So let's call on underscore selection. And now remember we called this my widget. So I'm going to take that and go my widget dot selected. And then what is going to be selected? File chooser dot selection. Now, why is this file chooser? Because that's the ID we gave this here. So whatever this thing has chosen, whatever you've clicked on, will get spot, will get put into here and then we'll get slapped into my widget dot selected. So, OK, now we've got that. Now we need to head back over to our menu dot pi file. And instead of our my layout widget, we need to define selected, right? And remember that's my widget dot selected that we're calling, right? And this passes self. It also passes the file name, which is, I suppose, going to be this guy right here. Okay. So inside of here, let's give a, a try accept block just to 
play nice here. And let's also go accept. And I'm just going to pass here. So before we do this, we need to sort of set up our image in our KV file here. So let's come up here and I want to put this above the file chooser, we could put it below if we wanted to, but I think above is a better idea. And let's just define an image, we kind of learned how to do this a couple of videos ago, I'm going to give this an ID of my underscore image. And we're going to give this a source of nothing. So we could put double quotes or single quotes. And remember, we looked at this a few videos ago, you can check the link in the comment section below to the playlist to see the video on using images, we give this a source to say where is the image located on our computer. Well, we're going to get that from this thing right here. So okay, remember, we called this my image. So now we can reference that I'm gonna go ahead and copy this head back over to our try block here. And let's go self dot ids dot my image dot source. And we want to set that equal to the file name. And this is actually a Python list, we want the zeroth item in the file name, that's the thing that we selected, that's the file name that's getting passed in through here. Okay, now that should be it. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. And you can see we've got our little image area up here, we've got this thing here. Uh, let me scroll around here and find some images. I think I've got a bunch in our GUI directory from our Kinter course. And we click on images and we click this boom, it pops right up. We can sort of uh, play around with this. And just that easy. Whoa. <laughs> so very cool. My floating head that's disturbing. And just that easy. Now if you're interested in like, maybe we don't want to do this with images, maybe we want to do this with getting a file name or something. Well, let's head back over here. And let's just in our menu, Let's just print out what is actually being selected here. So we can grab this same file name right here. And let's just print that out. All right, this will print it to the terminal, it'll see what's returning when we click on a thing, basically. So save this and run it. So we can pull this back over scroll down to our GUI directory. You just single click to open these things and images, and then click it on Aspen. Look at this is aspen.png. It even has the size of the image. Very cool. So now if we I clicked on this, so it should print it out to the terminal when we close our app here. So if I close this, boom, you see it prints out C colon backslash GUI backslash images backslash aspen.png. Basically the, the absolute path of the file you're clicking on. So if you want to do something besides images, like if this is a file you want to open or whatever, you have the path. Now you could just use your regular Python to do anything you want with it. So just sort of keep that in mind. So very, very easy. And if we go through this again, we're just creating this, this little function here selected It's in our main my layout widget, we just pass and we've looked at grabbing IDs for things. So this is the IDs of my image, which is what we defined right here in image, and the source, right, we're going to set the source of this, this to this file name. And we can comment this out. Now we don't really need to print that every time. So and that's all there is to it. Very, very simple. And we're grabbing this file name from right here, our file chooser icon view. On selection, we're grabbing the selected file chooser selection. And that's it. So uh, I mentioned in the documentation here, there's also a file chooser list view, if we want to look at that real quick, to use that all we have to do is change this from file chooser icon view to file chooser list view, very complicated, right? <laughs> so let's run this guy again. And now we get the list view. And same thing, we could scroll through here and let's find our GUI directory. There it is, I can click on it, it opens. And I can come back up in here to find images. And then boom, same deal. Very cool. So that's the file chooser, that's the file chooser icon view and the file chooser list view that's using it to grab an inch an image and slap it up on the screen very quickly and very easily we got a little file, we got a little image viewing app here. It's not much of an app. But you know, we're learning little steps at a time and very, very cool. So that's all for this video. If you like to be sure to smash the like button below subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 on memberships and pay just $49 to access all my courses over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books, join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is john elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.